Yeah, in the last class, we have uh, developed the equations for the design of mixed flow of solids, but single size. Okay. What we do in this uh, class is that again we extend the same analysis for mixture of particles. We have mixed flow of solids and most of the time mixed flow of solids, the excellent example is fluidized bed, where you have perfect mixing of solids and I hope you know what is fluidization. right? So, that is why only based on that we are moving and all chemical engineers must know what is fluidization and I am sure most of you would have done the experiments even in fluid mechanics laboratory. But your uh, experiments at that time probably would have been liquid solid fluidization. You have not done? You have done. Yeah. Anurag, you have done fluidization? Liquid solid. Yeah. Renita? Done it. Yeah. Gas solid is most widely used in industry. So, what we are talking here is gas solid where uh, perfect mixing uh, assumption is always very well valid. Okay. So, now, now what we are going to do is if you have two or three types of uh, particles that means, you know uh, sizes like 1 mm particle, 5 mm particle, 10 mm particle. So, how, how do you get fluidization is a totally different matter, but we assume that we have uniform fluidization for all these three sizes of the particles and then can you also develop design expressions for this mixture of particles. Right? So, that is the one, but in general uh, the, the, the realistic situation in fluid aged bed is when you have 1 mm particle and then 10 mm particle, I have just exaggerated there, 10 mm particle will never fluid age and 1 mm particle may illuterate, it may go out. Okay? So, that is why the realistic situation is that even if you have very narrow size particles and particularly when you have gas solid fluidization, you will have lot of attrition, because the solid particles are moving vigorously in the bed. So, one particle will go and hit the other particle, if the uh, there are edges for these particles, they are not perfectly spherical particles, you never get perfectly spherical particles except on the board when you draw or in the textbook. Okay. In industry you never get that. So, always you will have some kind of edges, rough edges for any particle and if you want to remove those edges, then go to fluidized bed, fluidize, all the corners will be cleared, then you will get almost spherical particles. Okay. And the, during that time what is happening is the lot of powder is generated, that powder comes out in the cyclone and sometimes if it is catalyst particles, so this uh, powder again they take, make particles and again they may send it. Okay. So, that is why gas solid fluid is beds we have this attrition, that means uh, small particles may get generated, but on the other hand to start with the process contains small particles and large particles small particles will go out of this terminal velocity. That is why I have been asking you know, tell me one use of terminal velocity in industry, this is one of the uses. You will calculate and then find out at what velocities these particles will go out. Right? So, elutation is a normal phenomena in fluidization. Now, in the next after finishing the distribution of solids, next one is extending the same thing to elutation. If I have elutation, can I design the fluidized bed reactor? This is more complicated but you know as a teacher I have to take you from simple to complicated. right? This is complicated design, the other one. So, that is what, what we do in this uh, class. right? So, the problems that may we may face now is that the residence time of the particles may not be uniform in the bed. right? So, the first case is single particles, uniform gas composition and they are not changing with uh, time, that is the assumption. right? So, that is why you do not have attrition, powder coming and all that is not there, ideal situation, so that we can easily understand what is going on in the bed. Okay. So, that one we have derived already. So, now the second situation is I have mixture of particles, maybe 1 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm particles. Right? So, now first we have to prove that this 1 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm particles will have the same residence time or if they do not have, how do you take that into account? That is the problem. And next one if you go elutation, definitely you will not have uh, yeah, the uniform residence time for all the particles. Why? Because uh, when you are continuously feeding to the fluidized bed, the light particles, elutation we are taking into account. That means, some of the fine particles will definitely go, maybe if you have um, 200 micron particles, 500 micron particles and maybe 800 micron particles, okay, fluidizing. So, then 200 particles may go to the top, may not be all, some of them, 
Okay, why? Because of this perfect mixing of all these solids, some 200 micron particles may stay inside, some 200 particles which may uh, got caught into this uh, you know outlet gas, then they may go out. So that means those particles are definitely not spending same residence time as other particles. That we have to bring into picture when you are designing this. That is the only complication. If you are able to understand this story first, then equations we will derive. Okay. Mixture of particles, we have to prove that all the particles will stay uh, same time or uh, that means the residence time is uh, same. But for elutation, definitely there will be residence time distribution or, or residence time changes for small particles and large particles. How do you take that into account and then try to design the reactor? What do you mean by design again? Always given the conversion, find out the volume or the total hold up here okay? or given the reactor, find out conversion. That is all what you mean by design. Equation is same for both, either this will be given or that will be given. So, now let us take that mixture of particles mixture of particles of different sizes different sizes, but unchanging. Unchanging size, mixed flow of solids, okay, mixed flow of solids and other assumption is uniform gas composition. Okay, good. So, we will imagine our bed something like this. We have the fluidized bed. This is gas. Gas may come out there. Then, we have the solids entering. Okay. So, these are the solid particles. I am putting something slightly bigger, something slightly smaller. Yeah, they are not uniform size. Then we also have what are called bubbles. This bubble is breaking. Somewhere here we have bigger bubble, maybe this side another bubble, and solids also come out. So, if I take this one as F, F is coming out. So, then we have three particles, you know, the three different size particles, or maybe four different size particles, or maybe two different size particles, or three different size particles. So, if I just show the distribution of the particles, so this is F of R i versus R i. R i is the particle, f of r i you know the flow rates. Okay. So, that distribution may be if it is something like this, this is very nice distribution. Okay. And this side also we can show that distribution. This is again f of r i. What says R i? Okay. Yeah. So, will this distribution really change? Because all the particles are coming in, they are not changing in size and getting reacted, coming out. Will the distribution, this distribution, will it change here? Just think I say. Will it change? You know, normally this is what is the problem with all of us. The moment we say distribution, our mind will block. We cannot imagine. Why are you, uh, I mean, uh, thinking so much time to answer this question? Yeah, so it should, must be same. Uh, but why are you keeping quiet? Sleeping time, huh? Uh. Yeah. 
Okay, so this must be the same. Okay, because there is nothing, no change is happening. Uh, the, the, those are the assumptions very clearly, right? So this distribution will be exactly, yeah, same. Good. This is one thing. Now I will ask another question. Now I have this distribution of solids inside. This is distribution in the outlet. This is distribution in the inlet. And now this is distribution in the bed. Okay. Will the composition will be same there also? That means, this is in the bed means it is W. W is the hold up. Hold up of 1 mm particles, 2 mm particles, 3 mm particles. Will that distribution will be different than this and this? Will it be different? Yes, sir. Why yes? Here is the illustration. Is it uh, we have taken that case? Are you a chess player? Uh, because chess players think 10 steps ahead. You are thinking about the next problem, which I am uh, going to tell you. <laughs> okay, this is the present problem where we are only assuming that you know no elutation, nothing, right? I mean, where did we say that particles are going out? It is the same size, uniform size, nothing is happening. So, uh, yeah, uh, why it is say? Yeah, that is the again beauty of assuming perfect mixing, ideal condition. Okay, what is the meaning of this perfect mixing? The outlet conditions and also bed conditions are exactly same. Okay. Otherwise, I told you know you cannot even write the material balance in the basic mixed flow reactor also. I have been repeating these things many times, but still it will not record because simply I think you come and sit and then enjoy the class and go that is all. No? Yeah, not for learning. So, that is why here also you will get exactly the same distribution. Right? So, this bed distribution. So, now this tells me that we do not have any change in the residence times, okay? but anyway mathematically also we can prove that. Please take this, otherwise you know you do not understand, I know that you know at least at least once in uh, before the examination at least you read it. Yeah, please take this. Since the system is assumed to be mixture flow of solids, since the system is assumed to be mixture flow of solids and the size particle is unchanging, the size of particle is unchanging, the size of particle is unchanging, the exit stream represents the bed conditions, the exit stream re represents the bed conditions, full stop. We can also say that, we can also say that the size distribution of the solids or okay. the size distribution of the bed, we can also say that the size distribution of the bed feed bed comma feed and exit streams are all alike, okay. are all alike or mathematically f of r i by f equal to w of r i by w. Okay. So, then which can be this is 1 a, which can be written as w by f equal to f of r i. Yeah. Good. So, our t bar m equal to t bar m of r i, because w by f is nothing but your T bar, right? Yeah. This, the, since these two are same, we also have W by F. So this is equation two. This is hold up divided by mass flow rate. F is mass flow rate. Good. So now once we know that the thing is same, okay, the residence time for each and every particle is same. We have an equation for calculating conversion. One minus x bar b equal to yeah what is that equation 0 to tau 1 minus x b of r i into e power minus t by t bar m by t bar m d t right so now the procedure is same that means 1 minus x b r i for each particle i have to substitute and then add up all the particles i mean this is for a single size particle and because you have the now the distribution you will have this is equation number 3. 
since you have distribution, you will have now 1 minus x bar the 2 bars sigma r equal to 0 to r m. Then we have a f of r i by f. So, this is equation number 4. Good. So, now we already know what is the solution for this we have, but again you know independent steps controlling film control, reaction control, diffusion control we can substitute here and correspondingly write the equations. Let me write that those equations and I think this is clear no, there is no not much you know it is very simple you have done already for uh, the, that integration and all that you have done for single size particles. Yeah, individual individual uh, rate controlling steps. So, now we have to just only take the weighted average, but only thing you have to prove is that your residence times are same. So, that your uh, t by t bar here which is coming later, okay, you, you will get most of uh, in all the equations you get uh, t bar by tau no, t bar m by tau. So, the t bar you will know for each and every size. Okay. So, that is all what you have to prove there, that is why you, you are not learning anything extra here in terms of equations except that you are only extending your knowledge of understanding that is all. Okay. Other than that you do not have anything new here. Good. So, if I write again for practice you have to anyway note down this for film control we have an equation this is maximum R m 2 factorial tau of R i t bar m minus 3 factorial tau of R i by t bar m whole square plus etcetera. Uh, oh sorry. I have given only two terms. Please check if I am writing something wrong, you have to tell me. Huh? Yeah. So, this is equation uh, 5, you have to remember all this. Huh? So, then 1 minus x bar double b, oh sorry, for reaction control. Number 2, I have to write reaction control. For reaction control, we have one by four tau of R by T bar M minus one by twenty. of r a by f, this is equation 6 and for diffusion control as diffusion control, we have again x bar b. T bar m minus 19 by 420 whole square f of r a by f. 
So, this is equation 7. And definitely you will have much more difficulty if you have two control or three control from this equation. Okay? But one has to do, it is only mathematical technique that is all. Conceptually you do not have to understand anything more, but only mathematics will be messy. So, that is why there is nothing new to learn conceptually. So, that is fine. Good. So, this is the one and uh, as usual I can tell you that if I know the reactor volume or hold up and then flow rate, flow rate we should know anyway. right? So, then you will know T bar m and then is easy to calculate x bar. For a new reactor, x bar will be given normally, okay, maybe 90 percent. That is what the problem also uh, given, that is for plug flow. right? So, uh, then uh, x bar v you will know, then you have to solve this equation to get T bar m. Once you know T bar m, this is the equation you have to use to calculate w. right? So, F is known to you and W. W, let us say you got two tons of solids. So, how do you put them as a fluidized bed? So, general thumb rule is fluidized bed, packed bed before packing. You know fluidized bed, uh, when fluidization um, starts, before that all the particles will be in packed condition. When the drag force of this gas, which you are sending from the bottom of the uh, distributor, bed, bottom of the bed, when it is equal to weight of the particles total weight of the bed then starts moving. Okay? So, that means, you are floating, you are making these particles float in uh, fluid stream. And at that point of time, if you look at this mixture now, the solids as well as gas, all the liquid properties you will or fluid properties you will see for this mixture. Mixture is now gas and uh, solids or liquid or liquid and solids. That is why the name fluidization is given. That means, imparting fluid properties for yeah, normally immobilized solids, otherwise solids cannot move. Right? So, by putting this fluid, then you can transform these solids into a fluid like state, that is why fluidization. Okay? Good. So, for that of course, the even now if you go to research papers in chemical engineering and see every journal will have at least minimum 2-3 papers in fluidization. So, that means, we have not yet understood thoroughly. Because we have put so many assumptions, it is very easy for us to understand the problems. But in reality, I have shown you here these bubbles. Those bubbles are the biggest headaches in any fluidized bed. But these bubbles are also good for mixing. Unless there are bubbles, there is no good mixing. So, that is why where do you cut? I mean, how many bubbles you need and how many bubbles you do not need? The, that is very important thing in fluidization. Okay? Because if you have very, very large bubbles and all that, you know, the, the, there will be chaotic conditions, you do not know what is happening in the bed. And that is why actually these models will not be exactly suitable for uh, calculating. There is what is called uh, bubbling bed models and also two phase models. So, these are the models which we will also discuss when you come to fluid aged bed reactors. Okay? But right now, it is simple decomposition. I told you, you know, I think I promised you any reactor you bring on this planet to me, then we can definitely imagine that either that one to be in mixed flow reactor, mixed flow conditions or plug flow conditions. That is why this fluidized bed has also has been imagined as a fluidized as a yeah, as a mixed flow reactor, because the conditions look like mixed flow. But the actual phenomena if you go and see inside the bed, it is slightly different than complete mixing. Okay? Solids are complete mixing, but how gas is transported to the solids and all that will be slightly different. That we will uh, read when you come to fluid aged beds. Okay? So, many times I am repeating about the design, uh, design objective always, you know, either x is given, calculate the volume or w, here hold up or when hold up is given, that means already available reactor with you, then calculate conversion. So, so these are the things. Okay? So, now let us take with elutriation, that is slightly more realistic. When the bubbles are just going from the, uh, th through the particles and when the bubbles break here, some of the solids also will just jump up okay, into the space. So, at that time, if there is slight change in the particle size due to attrition and all that, those particles will be carried away. And it is inevitable in any fluid aged bed. Okay. So, that is why that is more realistic condition with elutriation and let us take now design of fluid aged bed with elutriation, same conditions, but with elutriation. Good? Yeah. Again, size is not changing. The way what we are imagining, I told you that in reality you will have size change because of the collisions, attrition and all that. 
but in our problem here when you are talking about elutriation, the particles are not changing size. Only thing is I have some small particles and large particles. Some of the small particles may get elutriated, right. So, that means those particles are not going to spend more time in the bed. So, under those conditions how do we now design the reactor, that is what, what we do. And I think I have to remove all this. If I use this diagram, I think you will also draw the same diagram I think there. You know. So, that is why you have to draw a new diagram. So, I will just, I use this diagram, but please draw this diagram again for you in your notes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But the only thing here is that you have, that also I have to show, gas is going up anyway, but there are some solids also. this is F 0, F 1, F 2, solids are just going up. The distribution because now we have a, a little bit more number of uh, different sizes. So, I may have a distribution something like this. This is F of R i versus R i. F 0 R i, not F of R i in fact, F 0 R i. So, then in the bed as well as outlet I have the same composition, because again even here we have perfect mixing, right. So, in the bed I may have something like this, that is in the outlet and in the bed we have again Yeah. So, this is W of R i versus R i, this is F 1 R i, R i, but now here also you will have the distribution in the outlet here also. So, that will be if I plot here, this is F 2 of R i will be narrow size like this this is R i, because only fine particles are going no small diameters. So, that is why this moves this side, this moves slightly the other side, the distributions, qualitative distributions. Yeah. So, now we will uh, write the material balance for the solids. The material balance for the entire streams F 0 equal to F 1 plus F 2, this is equation 1 that we know very easily. Then we also have the size distribution mass conservation that is f of 0 of r i equal to f 1 of r i plus f 2 of r i. So, this is equation 2. That means, 1 mm particles if they are there in the inlet how many coming outlet here this stream and this stream together that balance. Okay. Good. Yeah, please again uh, take this. Since the mixing flow of solids is assumed, the composition of the under stream, this is called under stream F 1, you know you can write there. Since the mixing flow of solids is assumed, the composition of the under stream F 1 still represents the composition within the bed, okay. still represents the composition within the bed. So, that we have F 1 of R i by F 1 equal to W of R i by W, this is equation 3. Yeah, please take this uh, again next. The mean residence time of material of different size may not be the same. In fact, uh, pull stop there. In fact, small particles will be blown out or elutriated out of the bed and these particles spend less time in the bed than large particles. Okay, next para you write, hence for particles of size r i, for particles of size r i, 
t bar of r i equal to w of r i divided by f 0 of r i. Correct, no? w is in the bed and f 0 in the inlet, okay? f 0 of r i. So, this is yeah, uh, which can also be written, we have f 0 r i this equation 2, okay? which also can be written this as w f r i yeah, f 1 of r i plus f 2 of r i. This is simple uh, substitution only. Okay? So, f 0 is simply written like this. So, this also can be written of course, just by adjustment of the terms you will have here this is uh, 1 by f 1 of r i by w of r i plus f 2 r i w of r i. Okay? Yeah, this is equation 5. But do you have anything here connected in terms of easily measurable quantities? This is individual solids, R i, 1 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm like that. F 1 of R i, F 1 of 1 mm particles divided by hold up of 1 mm particles. Okay? And uh, again, uh, so you can write somewhere, substituting equation 3 in 5, substituting equation 3 in 5. Oh, okay. Uh, somewhere I it's uh, okay. I have to write here M to be specific. I have been maintaining that, so let me write that. So T bar. This is not tau. T bar. Uh, that is equal to one by W by F one plus F two of R I by W of R I. So, uh, what is it? Oh, F 1 by W. F 1 by W. Good. So, this is one equation what we have. So, that means, if I am able to find out F 1 and W and F 2 and W R I, F 2 of R I and W R I, then I have time for, uh, time known for each size, residence time. So, once I know this, now I will go to my 1 minus x bar b equations and then try to find out okay, for 1 mm what is the conversion, 2 mm what is the conversion, 3 mm what is the conversion, that is all. Okay? Good, but the no problem is do I know F 1, do I know F 2, W is easy, okay. W, W R I at least they are not that difficult. Okay? So, that is why we have to try to find out those things, but before that what we do is we will now assume that we know this t bar of r m at t bar m r i and then write the design expression. Then question how do I use that design expression? Right? Question is do I know t bar m, t bar m of r i for a, for, for a particular size. If I do not know what else I can do with this equation to find out a t bar, t bar of t bar m of r i. Okay. So, that is why design expressions first let us write, again design expressions are not new, same thing. If it is film control, reaction control, ash diffusion control, those are the same equations, same uh, uh, summation, because you have three different sizes, okay. that, will, uh, that will not change. So, that is why uh, the 1 minus, uh, okay. that is called design equation, design equations for m f of solids is 1 minus, okay, I think let me also write once more, x bar b equal to again 0 to tau of r i, here now you see tau of r i, then 1 minus x bar b of not x bar. 
So, this equation again T by T bar m. Now, please remember this. This will be R i divided by yeah, R i R i d t. Okay. So, if I know T bar m of R i for each particle, right. So, now this equation everything I know. 1 minus x b will give me the kinetics. So, that means, whether ash diffusion control or reaction control or whatever control we take. And from this, we know the extension for multi particles. That means, summation of that equation in terms of uh, you know all the particles, okay, sigma of all. So, that is equal to sigma of 1 minus x bar b of r i into f naught r i by f naught. So, somewhere I have missed this one. This is equation 7, this is equation 8. Right. I think we will write once more the equations that is for ash diffusion control, oh sorry, first film control. For film control, number of times if you write, you know, you will remember. So, let me write that. So, 1 minus for film control, yeah. Can someone tell me? Yeah, 1 by 2 factorial tau of R i by T m of R i minus 1 by 3 factorial tau of R i by T bar m of R i whole square, right? Yeah. So, other terms will come into f naught of r i by f naught. Okay? Good. So, I think the other one, other two also let us write, so that I think at least you will remember once more. Reaction control number 2, chemical reaction control when you have, then we have 1 minus x bar double b equal to sigma of all particles. So, 1 by 4 tau of r i by T bar m of r i minus 1 by 20 tau of r i by T bar m of r i plus we have other terms. Uh, okay. uh, this is whole square, right? So, you also tied up. Huh? Uh, so, this is f naught of r i divided by f naught. So, the other one is diffusion control, as diffusion control. So, here we have 1 minus sigma of all R m. So, then we have 1 by 5 tau of r i t bar minus 19 by 4 20 whole square, yeah, maybe here you will put plus f naught of r i by f naught. So, if I put number this is 9, this is 10, 
this is 11 okay yeah yeah so now of course in the next class we will try to find out the t bar of ri for these different sizes how do i know definitely i don't know because i don't know what is f2 okay and also wri and w of course as a total hold up i may know and f1 as the underflow i may know but we have to use this equation and then try to find out this t bar and that's what what we do in the next class okay good no questions sir yeah as usual no questions okay thank you